All right, welcome to Anvil Saga, a game about owning a blacksmith. Mm, we're gonna do story mode. Okay, let's see. There's difficulty. Storyteller. And Master Smith. Okay, so it seems like the Master Smith's the easy one. We'll go with Storyteller. Being a Smith isn't easy. Do I need a tutorial? Yes, I do. I need a tutorial. Well then, this is more like a barn than a home. Nothing to be done about it. At least the smithy itself is in decent condition. Alright, I'm controlling the camera. Cool. You will be managing a medieval smithy, and the main source of income for a smith is, well, of course, his orders. Let's open the shop for business and accept your first order. To do that, press the sign next to the stall with the left mouse button. Open the shop. Your first customer. Take a look at the order window. There you'll find the item, the resources needed for its creation, and the reward. Accept the order by pressing the green check mark on the order's UI. Uh, people won't wait forever. They'll leave if their patient runs out before the order is complete. All your orders will appear in the order feed. Accept another order by pressing the green check mark in the order's UI, then watch the feed. When working on several orders at once, you can set their priorities. Press the left mouse button to raise the order's priority and right mouse button to lower it. There can be five priority levels total. Orders with the same priority are worked on based on their remaining time. The less time remaining, the more the smith will focus on it. Raise the order's priority. With the left mouse button or drag and drop the order card to the left side of the order first. Right click on the anvil to move the character there and start forging. spends resources and receives gold after completing the order. Once the product is complete, it is automatically given to the customer. Orders are made with ingots. Ingots are smelted from ore, which can be mined or purchased. You don't have access to a mine yet, so let's order some ore. Let's open the merchant store. All goods from the store are delivered by a courier. You'll have to wait a bit before he arrives. In the meantime, you can smell the rest of the You can smelt the rest of the ore into ingots. <laughs> one piece of ore is good for one ingot. The smith will smelt ingots one after another until they run out of ore. Now complete the second order. You'll have more than enough ingots. Hurry before the customer gets tired of waiting. Yeah, we want that wouldn't want that to happen now, would we? Great job! You can spend the money you've earned on upgrading the smithy and building new rooms. Before building, let's close the stall. Closing the stall tells your customers that no new orders are accepted and those who are waiting for their order will stay. Close the stall with the left mouse button. This could use from furniture and an annex for the kitchen. Enable building mode. Uh, build a room. I was like, where am I going? Okay. I 
guess that's good. Each room's construction takes some time. You'll have to wait for the builder to finish their work. You can purchase the furniture right away. Let's set up your first living room. You'll need a bed, table, and a chair. I need furniture. How much money do I have? Three ninety-five. So. Like rotate it or anything. Okay. And what a table. What a chair. Excellent. Now I have a place to sleep. We can do the kitchen later. Now I can bring my wife and son over. Thirteen years later? Excuse me? That's it. Hold the hammer tight. Swing your arm up and strike the blank. I can't. I'll never be a master like you. Listen, when your mother and I came to France, we didn't have a single penny on us. Nothing but the fire in my eyes and my old instruments. Really? And not a single penny? Not more than a couple of dollars, to be sure. This is Arthur, the hero of the story, and your main character. Since childhood, he's been helping his father in the forge. But he's pretty good in it. any kind of craft. We have a lot of work today, son. Go flip the sign. We're opening. Alright. The young lady next to him is his daughter, Olivia. Is it the, the merchant from Gascony? Yes. Judging by the look on his face, he's happy with my foraging. There goes Jean Jacques Jr. Ugh, can't stand that guy. There, there. His father is a respectful craftsman, and Jean Jacques Jr. isn't too slow either, though he didn't inherit his father's talent. Don't let your emotions get the better of you. Learn how to conduct business, because that's what he excels at. Oscar, you are here too. How are you faring? Thanks for the instruments, and the harness is also perfect. Glad to see you at the fair. What brings you here, Finley? I'd like to order a small trinket, a brooch for my beloved daughter. Do this for me, would you? It's a piece of cake. Right, son? You got this. Monsieur Finley and Mademoiselle Olivia, I'm glad to see you both. Hello, Arthur. Oscar. Why didn't you order the brooch from my father? His shop is just over there. Her lady is charming as the fair Olivia. I could have given you a discount. Thank you. Jean Jacques, but Oscar and I have gone through hell and high water together. Any orders I have are only for him. Well, let's see how Arthur does it then. Sometimes you'll have to make a choice that will affect further events in the story. You'll see one of them now. Each option has a chance of success and failure. Study them carefully. You won't be able to go back on your choice. Let's see. The merchant ordered a brooch for his beautiful daughter. My father... Brought a jewel for Baron's ring with him. I could probably use it. Hmm. Hmm. I'll use the jewel. Dad, it's all done. Here. Good lad. Here, it is all done. It's lovely, isn't it? Let me see. The work is absolutely stunning. Look. Hmm, not bad. Not bad at all. 
Never would have thought Arthur had made it if I hadn't seen it for myself. Do you really think your blacksmiths are the only ones who know their way around a forge? My Arthur is a natural. My god, what a marvel. Thank you so much. Dad, look at the way it glitters in the sun. Wow, my friend, I'm impressed. Here, I'll gladly pay you extra. You better be ready. I'll tell everyone about your amazing skills. Hello, blacksmith. Still working hard? Yes, more or less. My son's helping out a lot. He's even much better than me at some things now. Ah, he really looks like you. Now then, will you make me a ring? We'll do our best. Get to it, son. Good day, Stephen Farron. If you'd given the order to my father, you'd already have your new ring. God, I hate this guy. He has such a punchable face. I'm aware of your father's skill as a craftsman. However, Oscar can do the same work for half the price that guarantees quality. Tell Baron that you've lost the jewel. The gem isn't here. It hasn't arrived yet. There's no gem? What are y'all what are y'all on about? My lord, you know perfectly well that the roads are unsafe. Who knows what could have happened? Oh really? Maybe that's true. Alright, I'll look into it. Wow, if I treated my customers like that, father would have beaten me half to death, if not worse. I don't envy you, boy. Jean Jacques doesn't know the meaning of mercy. Sorry about that. Is there anything else you might desire? Not really. I don't need anything right now. See ya. Well then, Jean Jacques Jr., take me to your father. Maybe you'll be able to honor my request. Follow me, please. We'll do our best. At least he left without a fight. He could have done something far worse. Looks like it's time for us to head home. Close the stall. Close the stall and it wouldn't do anything. Father, what do you think about me and Olivia? Can we be friends? We are just not their equal son, but in a merchant's family, a groom is judged by how fat his purse is. Cheer up, everything is in your hands. My father's words were no surprise to me. Inequality is both the scourge and the foundation of our society. However, the sincere smile and charming eyes of the merchant's daughter made my heart ache. The fair was coming to an end, so we gathered our belongings and set off home. It was the last fair I got to visit with my father. The disease hit him hard, but even to his last breath, he did his best to transfer his knowledge and skills to me, even when he could barely hold a hammer in his trembling hands. I had no choice but to make my father proud and become a decent apprentice. Many years had passed since Arthur's first fair, and he spent them learning the craft from his father. When Oscar fell terribly sick, the young blacksmith was overwhelmed with sadness. Oscar instructed his son to bury him in his motherland, so after his death, Arthur took to the road, leaving the forge to its fate. In England, he fulfilled Oscar's dying wish, but he couldn't shake off the abandoned forge out of his head. Arthur decided he needed to save the forge his father had put so much effort into and return to France. In his absence, the forge had fallen in complete disarray, but Arthur was teeming with strength and ambition, and so begins the Anvil Saga. Well, that's a kind of a sad start. And I wonder if we'll see Olivia again. You have a small house and forge at your disposal. It's not much, but it's still better than starting from scratch. Here, your glorious path to wealth and heart of your beloved girl begins. But all this lies far ahead, and for now, kindle the forge. Time to blow the dust off my father's anvil. Let's see what I can still remember. Alright, what do I... 
We want our gold, no popularity. And ingots. Smells bad. That's a. We have six ore. My arse is itching. Well, that's great. I'm running out of ingots. I should make more at the smelter. to the mine at the moment. I don't know how to get access to that. Do anything. What does this do? This is the end of the end of the day. Denying your character's energy, a tired character will make mistakes while forging may damage the workpiece. Then your workers to sleep so they can retain regain energy. The more comfortable the bed, the faster the character rests. I just kind of like walks through my house. Okay, so HP energy. I like how there's a double speed. Uh, it's not doing anything. Oh, that's because I have 20 out of 20. That's right. I was like, why isn't my forging doing anything? I only hold 20 at a time.
I'm assuming that's how I eat. Character has received a new trait. Characters can receive negative and positive traits. Each affects a character's behavior in a specific way. Carefully read trait descriptions and pick the best assignment for each worker. Instruction. I do the traits. Huh. Open the shop. And I guess we'll figure it out. Start. Start doing orders. what I saw yesterday. And tell me or what? Let's see. Customers from different factions do not like each other. If you make a order for a soldier, knight, or hunter from one faction, it will worsen your reputation with the other. The same applies to witches and monks. However, since they don't have many eyes and ears in the province, reputation only decreases the member of the opposing faction witnesses the production of order. Bandits, that is, the people of Luca, the just, do not like to be refused. Each refusal will refresh will worsen your reputation with them. You will receive different bonuses and penalties depending on your reputation level with different factions. For example, England can generously reward you with gold every day, and bandits will, can intimidate your workers so that you don't have to pay them any wages. You can take a look at your current reputation bonuses and penalties in the order journal. Be careful, as reducing your reputation with the ruling faction to zero will lead to the most dire consequences. Uh oh. Forge alone. The village chief has sent you three young men who want to become your apprentices. The young man is new to the village. He came from Gascony. My name is Theris, Master Blacksmith. 
Monty is the local trickster and rascal. He tries to look like a nobleman in everything he does. My name's Monty, sir. I've wanted to become your apprentice for ages, if you will have me. And this is Stone. Winner of all the fights and wrestling contests in the village. I can do all sorts of things, and I'm strong as an ox. I'm sure I'll be useful. Which of them is worthy of becoming your apprentice? So, if I do this guy, relationship with England will be worse, but France will improve. England and France will be worse, bandits will improve. In relation with England will improve, but France will worsen. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this guy. Thank you for trusting me, Master. I'll never let you down. We now have an apprentice. He will need a room where we can rest after hard work. Keep an eye on his level fatigue and pay his salary on time. Your apprentice still will improve with time. And now let's get to it. Accept and successfully complete five orders with theirs as help. Forge workers will be demanded to be paid to continue work. The refusal will upset them, and if their mood drops further, the apprentice will leave the forge. You want them to get rid if you want to get rid of a worker, you don't need to remove the stairs to the cellar. You can just <laughs> you can just fire them. You're a smith, right? In the name of his majesty, the Dauphin of France, I'm authorized to collect collect the land tax for the good of our country. All of you just prey on honest people, no matter what you call yourselves. Are you paying or not? Can I freaking just pay the land tax? Whatever. The higher your forge's prestige, the more appealing it'll look to rich clients. By increasing your forge's prestige and upgrading the stall, you can attract money bags who are willing to pay much more for their order than peasants. In addition, stall upgrades will increase your maximum workshop storage space for wooden ingots. Prestige is increased when you complete orders, but it has an upper limit. Upgrade the house decorations to increase your prestige limit. With a stall like this, you can only expect bumpkins. Time to change this ramshackle shed for something more respectable. Upgrade your stall, open the room construction menu. Required fame level 50. Ugh. <laughs> so I can't do that. Design. 
By the way, have you heard the news? The English are planning another assault. Lots of towns have already given up their keys. And they seem to have Flemish support as well. More than anything, I hope that the war doesn't reach this place, or both of us will end up doing hard labor instead of hard work. <laughs> I know I'll get the gold. No, you're, you're gonna pay me right away. <laughs> I don't I don't have any money. Let's see, in return I'll give you a bear skin. What do you say? I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. The God fearing.
I only have to find the Philosopher's Stone. things. Right. This guy can go to sleep. This guy can go to sleep. This guy. I also need, I also need to buy more food. Yeah. game in the forest. Help me out. any bits left. Whoops. Never seen this merchant in our village before. There, let's go and find out who he is and what he wants. Hey lad, call the owner. I didn't come here all the way from... I don't even know how to pronounce that. And talk to an apprentice. Get a move on, my boy. Have you come from afar? How can I help? came from the south and I'm settling up some trade links. I can bring you whatever you'd like for the best price from Damascus steel to precision instruments. Want to work together? That might be good. 
Don't even think of refusing. I barely escaped the bandits myself. The roads are unsafe. The thieves and bandits gather like vultures where armies have passed recently. You should agree, as I'm the bravest merchant of those prepared to offer their services to you. Bandits are all we need right now. If we're talking business, would you be so kind as to take an order from me? What should I make for you? Again, time to dig a shaft. Sooner or later, you'll start expanding your forge, building more rooms, and even digging deep into the earth. Each forge needs constant supply of ore. You can purchase it from a merchant, but it's much more efficient to mine yourself. Let's dig a shaft right into our cellar. Expand and upgrade the forge. Production. Okay, this is about rooms. I don't have the money to make any sort of room. Fearing. Great. What happens if I'm broke? <laughs> what do I what do I do when I don't have any money to do anything? Bye. 
Merchant. Better give me a freaking heck ton of money. Well then, not bad, not bad. I can see you're a reliable one. My shop is at your disposal. I'm sure we'll have a profitable partnership. I'm sure you mean mutually profitable? Yes, yes, that's exactly what I meant, of course. a little stressful uh, to uh, sell some stuff but I think I'll be able to get back on track hey there author it's been a while have you decided to follow in your father's footsteps hey Jean Shock Jr if not me then who how is your smithy doing? Quite well off, thank you. That said, my father recently passed away, just like yours. Now, I'm just Jean Jacques. It is all the will of the god. I have quite grand prospects for this smithy. Oh, my condolences. Why visit our humble smithy? Can't handle the orders? We're handling them quite well, quite well indeed. I just wanted to see how you're doing. There are only two smithies left in the province. Neither of us really need competitions in times like these. What would you say if I offered to buy your smithy? You'd be my right hand man. With your talent, we could be magnificent. Thank you for the offer, but my father didn't work himself to the bone just for me to sell the forge. Yeah, yeah, I didn't think you'd give in to us so easily. Well, next fair, we'll see how we compare. By the way, I saw Finley's daughter, Olivia, a few days ago. She has blossomed in quite the beauty. Be sure to pay them a visit. I'm not surprised. She has always been fair. Why do you care? Well, you know, I just remembered how you looked at her back at the fair. Finley will only agree that she will that she marry a rich man. He's a smart one. So don't get your hopes up and to think about my offer to buy the forge. Thank you for the advice, Jean Jacques. Glad to see you, as always. I must take my leave. The work isn't going anywhere, and I don't have the time to wander around and get up in people's business. You're a good lad, Arthur. It's a shame you'll have to work in the fields before long. Have fun with your smithy while you still can. That's rude. that they don't automatically just eat the food.
to make the most money with the less ingots. Those are my gold mines. No, I'm not gonna waste four anvils for King Rooms Warehouse. Turn, I'll give you a bear skin. Uh -oh. Hello, Smith. I need your help. The fate of the universe is at stake. The fate of what now? Oh, never you mind. Give me a wristband for a time funnel manipulator and make it a good one. Get you a what? Oh, forget what I said. A wristband made from leather. Can you do that? This is the doctor. What the heck? I didn't even... Oh, jeez. Regular item. You should have opened with that. A wristband. That I can do. Marvelous. Stupendous, even.
need the wristband now, Smith. The universe is in danger. Still do not understand who is in danger, but here's your wristband. Good man, I believe I should be seeing you soon enough. Oh, and if you were wondering, you can call me the doctor. Doctor what? That doesn't matter. Not in the least. See ya. Mine entrance or chest. Oh no, I didn't want to. That's not what I wanted to buy. Oh, I'm dumb. Arthur, you're back. Your father was quite the craftsman. Such a shame he passed away. He did good work, and most importantly, his prices were low. I can see you're restoring his old business. That's right, my lord. So much work has been put into it, and it would be a travesty to let it all go to waste. Well, we always need a good blacksmith around here, especially in times of war. You know, I've always gave the best orders to your father, but... You, I'm not so sure about. You'll need to earn my trust. I'll gladly prove my father taught me everything that he knew. Good, that's the spirit. Now make me a few swords. It's fine if they're a bit dull, but they need to look good. I'm only going to pay you for the materials. If you can manage a simple task, I know that you can be relied upon. You can count on me, my lord. May I ask why you need such swords? You might not. It's a matter of national importance. Well then, Arthur, don't disgrace your father's name. Swords. I don't have any. I don't have any money left. I'm making bad decisions. Complete. Quest complete. Are my swords ready? 
Of course, my lord. I did the best I could. I hope you like them. Well, work like this would have earned you a walt from your father. Eh, fine. I'll have to do. I was expecting more of you, but there's some potential, I suppose. If you pull yourself together and work diligently enough, maybe you'll become my courtsmith. Father would have really loved that. I'll do my best, my lord. need to be fed regularly. A hungry worker will make mistakes while forging. If a worker remains unfed for a long time, they might starve to death. Yeah, I'm gonna starve to death. Who was this guy? Greetings, Smith. I'm the leader of a mercenary band. The boys and I are planning to set up nearby. If we could do with restocking some equipment, wanna help us out? help you if you set up camp here. Maybe the village will be safer. Great. Not everyone likes our ilk, but we're good men and we remember when we're treated with kindness. shields. No. What happens if I fail? Shields doing, Smith. I'm up to my neck in orders, so I can't find the time for this. You'll have to do without. Damn you. I knew we shouldn't have set up camp in the middle of nowhere. Special mercenaries feared and respected by both peasants and nobles have settled nearby. Order prices are higher, soldiers come more often, knights, merchants, monks don't come. Oh, like me.
that's where I'm gonna end for today. I will see y'all later.